Hey guys, this is Stefan here from Sybils AI, and this is a quick video tutorial on the latest features we've just released uh, of Sybils AI. So when you first uh, get started and signed in, you'll come to your projects page. So if you're visiting for the first time, you won't have any projects created yet. So you can click up here to create a new project. Uh, this will start processing and uh, creating a new project for you. Um, and you'll get an automatic number. So it will just be project one probably in your case, but I can actually change the project name if I want to by clicking edit and changing the project name here. I can also edit, add a project location if I want. Um, the way you get started with Civils AI is you need to upload some documents. So um, here I can drag and drop uh, different document types. So this is a design report. Um, this would be a report containing lots of words or tables of information. CAD drawing, this would be a blueprint or a drawing. You can upload a bunch of different drawings at the same time um, and we will t extract information from each drawing. And also geotechnical reports, so if you have some borehole logs or yeah, geotechnical information, you can drag and drop this here to read out key information. Um, so basically I'm just going to show you how to get started with this design report. So let's say I've got a dummy report here which I want to upload. I can drag and drop this file um, or I can drag and drop multiple files into here. They can be also scanned documents and some handwritten information. We can also read uh, information from those. And when that information is uploaded, we'll extract information from it and it will start processing away in here. This will take about five minutes or, or less to process each file. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you a project which I've already added information to. So I've clicked down here to go back to all of my projects. I can see project six in here. But what I want to do is open up this project which I've already added some information to. So within this file, within this project, I can click design reports. And in here I can view some files which I've already added, including some building codes. Um, an environmental report, foundation design test results. So these are all different, like let's say text uh, based documents. For my drawings, I can click CAD drawings. And within here, I will have read, um, here, here are the different project drawings which I've uh, uploaded. And then geotechnical data, if I click this, this will be your geotechnical information, borehole logs for across the site with each row here being a different borehole log for the project. So what I want to do here is I want to actually go back to project and I want to start searching for some information. So let's say I've got thousands of documents in here and I want to try and cut through to find some quick answers from all the project files. So what I could actually do is I can search for a drawing to start with. So I could search for something like size of drainage culvert and I can hit search. And this is going to read through all the project documents at the moment. And we're hopefully going to find the drawing file in here for the uh, drainage culvert. So here you can see it started to read out some information um, and this will take a few seconds for it to generate the answer. At the same time, it will also open up the reference which has been used in order to create this answer. So here it's found the drawing for the drainage sewer tunnel culvert, which is 2.4 meters. It's also read off other dimensions from that drawing, some of the key dimensions. So the idea here is this is the drawing and I can then verify and cross check this information. We also find other references. So you could think of this as like a control F feature for all the project documents. So we not only search the drawings, so this there could be other related um, drawings in here besides the this one that's been pulled back with the answer. So I also get other related search results down here alongside different project reports. And I can filter those using by clicking CAD or by clicking reports. I can now also actually create new information or create um, structured information. So I can type here, create table of max pile settlement. Let me hit uh, search. And this is going to now try to create a table for the pile test results. So it's searched through the documents and now it's creating this table for me from scratch. 
So it'll take a few seconds for it to create. And you see here the table with the different uh, columns and rows of the different piles that have been tested. I can click this reference here to see where this information has come from in this report, but it actually already opens it up at the page that I need. So here I can see the different pile test results and you'll see the level of accuracy which we're able to extract. So it will be like 99% accurate in terms of us reading information from tables. But it's always important to also verify in the information yourself. I can also then copy and paste this information um, that's been read off onto the clipboard and then paste this into Excel or into, into some other software I might be using. Um, another thing I can do is I can actually use this to read some more complicated information from drawings. So I could say here are um, are there any um, are there any affected properties uh, mentioned in site layout. So this is now going to try and find the site layout drawing and it's going to see if there's any properties nearby or any um, so it's found that there is a site layout uh, drawing and it mentions there are properties that are affected by the some kind of uh, diversion. So these properties are indicated in blue shaded areas of the layout drawing. So here we have our drawing and we can zoom in a little bit here to find that information. So we can see here two blue drawings, so two blue buildings and an alignment. And it says here that the properties are affected um, are mentioned there, so it's found some information. We can also use this to check building codes. So if you have lots of building codes that are being used on a project, we can also search for those. So let's say you, you're looking for a requirement from a building code or a limit. So I, here I want to find out the setback limit for a property from, let's say, a road or the edge of the site. So I can say, what is setback for a four-story building? So I can search for this requirement. And sometimes it could, you need to do a bit of prompt engineering. So you need to rewrite this prompt a little bit that I just wrote. So setback requirement, um, sorry, the, the setback for a four story building. Sometimes you need to try a few different prompts to get exactly what you need. Um, so the way in which you search for information down here, quite often you wanna try and search for keywords. So the way in which our software works is it tries to do some keyword matching so here it's found, yeah, for a four-story building, the setback requirements are as follows. Setback from the neighbor of 3.75 meters, setback from the road of zero meters. So this is straight from the building codes. So let me have a look here at where that's actually come from. You can see some di a diagram here and also the table, which shows you exactly where this has come from. So ground floor plus four levels is 3.75 meters setback. So this is um, an idea of how our search tool works. Um, I, can also, I can also share this with other people. So I can share this project with other people in the team by clicking share with my team down here. And this will actually share that project uh, with others. So um, if I'm working in a company and I wanna share that project with others in my team, I can do so with this share feature. Um, this obviously keeps the data private and still within your company, but this allows you to share it with your colleagues um, who are on the same account. 